Well, the key to all of that is what's called concept congruency. What concept congruency is, is it is how you connect the vision of all the pieces together. If you're designing a fast food concept and you're selling filet mignon at a high price point, it's not going to work. Much like if you're designing a fine dining concept with a drive through you probably have a problem. Concept congruency is all the pieces in the concept are aligned so that they make sense for what it is you're doing. So whether you're thinking about how your employees are going to dress or the colors of the logo, concept congruency has an impact there. Again, I'll use the Haiti example. When we designed the logo for the client in Haiti, I made the colors of the logo colors that fit the concept. Interestingly enough, I happened to pick the exact colors in the Haitian flag. They weren't real fond of that. I didn't know. I'd never seen a Haitian flag. Well, they're right in the middle of a revolution or whatever there. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Well, when they saw the colors that I chose for the logo, I instantly got feedback, to say the least. So we changed the colors of the logo. Well, but think of that even with your restaurant. It doesn't have to be in a foreign country. With your restaurant, there are certain colors we use. Fast foods use a lot of yellows and blacks and reds and whites. Fine dining, not so much. Fine dining uses more earth tones, right? Well, concept congruency is taking each of those pieces and putting them in a way so that you can inspire the consumer to understand that the concept is aligned. Name and logo. The absolute most important thing with concept congruency is the name and the logo. It is the one thing that every customer you have is going to look at. Spend a lot of time debating the name. Truly do a brain dump on all the different names. Truly do a brain dump on all the potential different logos. It can't be clip art. We get plenty of people coming to us with, oh, yeah, my aunt made this for me. Clip art. Probably won't work. You're heading down a path of losing a ton of money. It can't be clip art. You guys spend plenty of time debating names, looking at shapes and colors of logos, what it looks like on every type of background. But it's critical because everybody looks at it. Needless to say, in the restaurant business, the second thing would be the menu. Determining the number of items on a menu. One of the things we see with our turnaround practice, and what our turnaround practice is, is, hey, Howard, I'm in business. I've been in business for two months, or I've been in business two years or 20 years, and I'm losing everything I own. Uh, we need help. Can you come help us? And I get there, and I look at their menu, and their menu is that thing. I mean, you're looking at all kinds of items. I'm over-exaggerating when I say that thick, but not by a lot. They got pages of items. They see certain restaurants. I'm sure you've all been to the Cheesecake Factory, where the menu is huge. And they execute almost to perfection on every item. That's why the Cheesecake Factory can do that. Because their systems are so good. Their product is so good. Their managers are so good. For that matter, their financials are so good. They can afford to do that. They are the highest volume, average unit volume restaurant chain in the country. By far. Okay, so they can afford to do that. But then the independent sees it and says, well, Cheesecake Factory's got all these items on their menu. I can do that. <laughs> no, you can't. First of all, that's not what the customer chances are, are going to is going to come to you for. 
they're not going to come to you often enough to try all the items anyway. And there's no way that you can operationally execute it. Well, so that huge menu drives your food cost higher, makes your operation more complex, makes it more difficult to train your employees, requires that you have a bigger kitchen. I, I can go on, but what it comes down to is you can't have a menu that big. Every concept has a certain number of menu items they can handle. Fast food, fewer. Fine dining, from this end. Casual dining, somewhere in between. And everyone has their number of items they can handle. And there's a reason, rhyme and a reason for each of those decisions. But I can tell you more often than not, menus are too big. And you've got to dial a menu down if you expect to operate it. But then let's talk about pricing. Interestingly enough, more often than not, menu pricing is too low. And I know that shocks you to hear me say that. But when we go into restaurants that are in trouble, more often than not, their prices are too low. You sit here and look at it, and you say, OK, what portion are you giving these people? And they show it to me, and then I add up the cost to produce that plate of food. And they're charging a price that there's no way they can make money at. The other thing is how you lay out a menu price. A menu price, think in terms of what the customer thinks. The reality is, is the customer thinks in terms of 49 and then 50 is a whole new level. So $7.49 is one thing, $7.50, that's a whole new level. $6.99, seven bucks. <coughs> To the customer, that's a whole new level. But yet I see 645. And I'll say to the person, why do you do 645? Oh, because I think it looks great, all the fives. And I'll say, well, the customer doesn't care, so why not get the four cents? Why not get the 649, the extra four cents on the thousands of people that come through here in a year? That is the difference between you losing everything and you making money. That's it. Or they'll do the they'll do the 790. Well, I like all the zeros. Really. There's nine cents, you might as well get it. 